kind of pulling a half of a spread, pulling a dredge on one side and a, I think a planer on the other, hoping to get a Wahoo bite. Uh-huh. And we raised a, uh, raised a quad of sales and, and caught a couple of them. And then, you know, throughout the day caught two or three more singles. And, uh, that's my mate was like, ah, oh, did you mark them on the, on the sonar? I was, oh yeah, sure. I saw it. <laughs> 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 no, I said, no, unfortunately I can't, can't attribute it. And how did it start out? Like what was the origin of the story? Too much alcohol. Really? Okay. Because <laughs> if God wanted us to have fiberglass boats, he would have given us fiberglass trees. It's it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit as yeah. far as if I can remember uh-huh. correctly. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the State of Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm Nick Carullo. I'm joined with Anthony Pino with Hooked Optics and Captain of the Blood Money. Every Tuesday, we'll be joined by a captain, mate, boat builder, or owner discussing different techniques, skill sets, and what sets them apart from different guys in the industry. Before I welcome our guests, I would like to remind you that we don't make any money from this. We don't run ads. All we ask is that if this broadcast brought you any value in any way, uh, share it with a friend. Let's get started. Let's introduce our uh, guest, legend, Captain VJ Bell. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, why don't you give us a little, little intro, who you are, Cap? Okay, Nick, Anthony, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. I am, um, again, VJ Bell. I run a, a boat here in Stewart called The Unbelievable. I've got a, um, a business, Stewart Big Game Fishing, where we do some, uh, some chartering when the owner isn't using the boat. The boat's a, uh, it's a 61 Richie Howe. 2013 boat nice you know nice boat and uh been working with these guys for about six years um i grew up in uh, watch prig virginia just south of ocean city where uh, obviously anthony stomping grounds there and um you know started meeting there as a kid and, and moved to stewart when i was about 20 to uh, to do this kind of work year round that's awesome what was that like growing up in watch Creek back in the day i was just down there uh flounder fishing and trout fishing the other day vj you know, it, it was a great place to grow up, Anthony. And, and uh, when I go home now, I mean, I love it there. My parents still live there, but it, it's a little sad to me to see so little going on there now. Yeah, you know, it, the, seemed, uh, it, it was a pretty, pretty, pretty strong charter. It was charter a, stuff going on there, right? It was a it was a booming town in the, uh, you know, so I was I, I was fishing there and they say the late 70s up through about I don't know, the early 90s when I was working on boats there and uh, the, the streets were always lined with, you know, with uh, trucks and trailers, um, small boat center consoles out flounder fishing. And, uh, and, you know, a lot of guys in, in uh, what June through September, a lot of, uh, a lot of really good offshore fishing took place there. A lot of tuna fishing and, and uh, white Marlin fishing. Um, and we were, God, we were busy. There was a, there was quite a charter fleet there and, and the boat I worked on, we fished six or seven days a week throughout the summer, you know, and on, on the weekend, the weekends and the spring and the fall, um, you just, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure what happened. You know, there's, uh, a, a lot of the old guys, uh, passed on and, and, uh, there's still a couple of guys running charters there, but, but just very few. Last time I, uh, I, I zoomed around there in my parents' little boat. I, I would be afraid to try and take a big boat in the inlet there anymore. It's just changed so much. I, I was wondering about that because I was, we were there on my brother's uh, 21 Maverick and it was, I mean, that's a great boat for shallow water, but it was, it was sketchy and I never really been around there before. And I mean, it seems like I, I, I don't, maybe it's the day and the age and the the size of that inlet in general that maybe the boats are just too big to go in there anymore. Um, but it's a, it's, it's definitely, I, I just remember years ago hearing about incredible, like there being a pretty strong charter charter uh, scene down there. And uh, yeah, I can't put my finger on it, but I would say maybe that might be the, it, it. Cause that is pretty sketchy getting in and out of there. For sure. It used to be, it seemed like to me, um, you know, because I, I, years later, once I was running a boat, we'd stop in there with the, I ran a boat called the Bone Shaker for a while. We'd stop in there with our 40 foot Whitaker. And then again, we had a 54 Willis, which is, is up in Ocean City now. Um, I can't remember what they call it now. Beautiful boat. Chaser. But the Chaser. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyhow, um, you know, we, we never had any trouble now something that drew much more than five feet. I, I probably wouldn't have tried back then, but it's, uh, 
I don't know, just uh, things shifted here a few years ago. I don't know if it was one particular winter. They had some some storms or what, but uh, Cedar Island and Paramore, all that stuff and Dawson Shoals, it's just, it's just moved around a lot. And like I say, my... <laughs> My uh, my experience the last summer or two that I've been up there, I, I wouldn't dare try it with, you know, I was I was scared to put her on plane in a in a in a Carolina skiff. <laughs> gotcha. But it was a great place to grow up, um, yeah. you know, and certainly got a got a good basis for uh, for this career that I now have. And there were there were a lot of guys from Watchaprig that had moved to Stewart to uh, to run boats and, and made on boats. I came down here with a guy named uh, Ray Parker that had a uh, had a Whitaker that he ran here out of Sailfish Marina and Stewart. And at that time he had an old Harker's Island boat that he ran out of Watchbrig. And uh, I would, I would come down here and spend the winters with him and did that for a few years until I ultimately just moved down here and, and uh, you know, made when was that? Stewart. When did you move down here? That was in, uh, let's see, I guess uh, like 1990. I started coming down in 86, spending the winters in, here in, in uh, 86. And then, uh, Three or four years, I went did the back and forth thing, and then ultimately just uh, just uh, made Stewart home, based out of here. And what year nice. did you start running the uh, Bone Shaker? Started running the Bone Shaker in '94. Um, Joe Laner had, had he had had that boat for a couple years prior, and I had uh, I, I got my license in '90 in 1992, and I ran a, a 41 Viking, which was just a, a private boat here in town for uh, for a couple of years, and then when the when that job came available i uh i wound up getting that and that was you know that was a was a real career maker he fished a lot of tournaments um always had a good team of anglers uh and just you know just really got after it and uh so with that job i learned a lot and and kind of got a, a lot of exposure which has has really helped carry me how, how old were you when you started started running running that boat i would have been uh 27 i guess i got you nice yeah when i was on there and that was good that was a good job it did that for about 13 years and uh anyway you know great opportunity so were you were you younger than most of the guys running running boats at that time vj or was there like a group of young guys maybe so yeah, yeah it didn't seem like there were it seems like now there are a lot of you know 25 28 year old yeah. guys running boats back then i, I looking around I mean, there was Rob Moore and, and some other guys, but yeah, I'd, I'd say most of the guys here in Stewart were were, uh, were senior to me at that point anyway. What do you think helped you get those sort of opportunities when you were a bit younger? Well, I don't know. I mean, I had been, um, you know, I'd been here uh, mating for, let's see, at that point, seven or eight years before I took the bone shaker job. So I, I knew a lot of the, knew a lot of the folks here and, and uh, certainly had you know, worked with good guys, um, that, that taught me a lot. And I don't know, just try not to try not to offend anybody along the way. <laughs> you, know, you know, there's God, there's, there's plenty of uh, work out there for, you know, for mates now. Um, yeah. you know, the main thing is like, say, just, just being able to get along with people and uh, treating people well and, and kind of learn the fishing as, as I went. Yeah, so yeah. that, that, I don't know. I was, you know, I was looking back. It was, I've had other times as well where guys would give you an opportunity and, and, uh, you know, hopefully you make good on it. Yeah, man. How, uh, how do you compare the sail fishing like in that era to now? Well, um, I mean, I know like, you know, technology's changed, but technology's changed a lot. Um, you know, and we have good winners and we have bad winners. Um, really when I came to Stewart, say in the late eighties, there were a couple of guys pulling dredges, maybe Dave Burrard would, would, uh, I remember those guys rigging one, uh, on the dock before a tournament there in, you know, 86 or 87. And it was, they had seen, obviously they'd done a lot of tuna fishing up North with guys pulling the, uh, uh, umbrella rigs and all that stuff. But to my knowledge, Dave was the, the first one that was doing that. So, you know, on a daily basis, we'd go out there and pull a couple squid chains, and it was it was a rarity for us to to pull a dredge every day until my maybe my my second or third year on the bone shaker we kind of started doing that on our you know on a, on a regular basis it wasn't just a tournament thing we'd uh, you know we we'd pull now they were smaller you know nobody ever put 50 mullets on a on a dredge back then we might pull a pull a double <laughs> or something with a dozen mullets on it or uh, you know 18 mullets at the time but um to see that you know the amount of preparation 
and the amount of work that goes into it sure seems like it's increased a lot since back then. Yeah. But especially, especially we're probably a lot more effective than we were then too, you know. <laughs> Stewart is the that is the place that I feel like where made at least understood or tried to or thought they understood the fact that like they could if they outwork people, they could I feel like that that sort of attitude came from Stuart. You know, if you can rig more and be more prepared is, I feel like that was a big, a big a Stuart type of, uh, yeah. of attitude, yeah. you know? Some, some mates would say it's a pain in the ass to work up there. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it, it is, there's a lot of, a lot of preparation to go out there and catch some sailfish. Um, you know, we, uh, we enjoyed, I enjoy the trolling, enjoy the payoff. We were, we were, my mate and I were, were deboning some mullets the other day and he was like, man, those kite guys haven't made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, you know, but that's a lot of work too. And some of those guys go and catch all their own bait, pin it up. And, you know, it's not like for us, we, we, if we, we go live baiting out here once in a while, we'll, uh, we'll stop and catch three or four dozen and call it good. Or, uh, you know, or stop and buy a couple, three dozen from uh Stewart live bait up here. But, <laughs> you know, more often uh, this time of year we're trolling and, and I don't know, I guess we're used to it, but yeah, a lot of guys that, you know, that pass through say, man, that's a lot of work for a sailfish and they're that's right. That's a lot of work. Tough place to be a mate. It's now, cool though. It, it's a good training ground, man. There's a lot of good, good trolling fishermen that come out of there and I think it's good. Yeah, for you. yeah absolutely. I think so. I think so. And you got, how about in, uh, how about in ocean city, Anthony, you guys are, are you still pulling a mixture of stuff you pull in some mullets a lot of mullets or a lot of squid? um I, I on my boat we did not fish a a, a a dead bait on the dredge the entire summer just too squid, well too you squid. have pretty good, you have pretty good access to squid dredge yeah so. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean i think i think there's a there's plenty of boats that still that still use the do the uh mullet and ballyhoos with the tournaments i think I think the red the red squid dredge in the right areas is really really something to to think about when you're in the when you're in the like on the edge and the the squids are balled up there. Um, right. But yeah, I mean we we did that, but there's plenty of people that still rig a hole. And I I had always kept a mullet and a ballyhoo dredge ready in case we needed to switch over there in in the freezer, but we just we just never did. It wasn't the fishing wasn't like this year. There wasn't a big fleet and you know, there'd be like, you'd have to out present people like you do Stuart. I feel like it was very, very, you just had to be in the right area and get a little luck to find the right conditions. And then, and then, you know, typically most of my best days, I did have a boat boat around me, you know? So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It was, it was a very different year, but I think that would, that, that lent to the, be able to just use the squid dredges versus having the, have, having to do the real thing, you know? Sure. Now, do you have you have a sonar in your boat? Yeah, yeah, we've had it. We've had ours for three years. Okay, we just uh, we just installed one, and uh, so I'm I'm trying to learn it. And they tell me, you know, that you may or may not use it as much here. Although I've talked to some guys that that have found them to be very effective here in the shallower water. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm you know looking forward to reaping some of the benefits. I certainly I fish uh, in Wrightsville Beach a lot in the winter, and like 200. 150 to 200 feet a lot. And I know that's a, a little, is that deep for you guys there in Stewart or is that? No, that, normal? that would be, that would be our, you know, yeah. kind of our normal day. There's a, there's ways to, to make it work that I've found. It's not nearly as effective as being, being offshore of a hundred fathoms, but it, 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 it you know, it can't not hurt, you know, it just, uh -huh. just seeing a giant bait ball, you know, is probably a good, good idea or good you know just yeah. good good in information to have you know absolutely so yeah. absolutely pretty cool tool it's a i mean i'd 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 be curious to see what like running a boat without one would be now like i don't know three years i i'm not going to say that i'm over relying on it but it's such an effective tool you have to use it you know or you're yeah. if, if you don't if, if you don't use to, hard to yeah. go back now yeah. yeah. I mean, now, do you do you have somebody that that sits up there and operates the thing while no, you run the I, boat, or do I, you do it all? I do it all. I I I'd, I'd suggest the UVJ if you don't have the little little wired remote that only has the the range the dis the range the gain and the the tilt to just get that. I, I just do it all. I can't. I can't deal with having people upstairs a lot with me, you know. Like if the right. boss wants to come sit up, well, it's a little slower, and I'm I'm kind of searching then it'd be good, but you know, it takes a, 
a fair bit of concentration, you know, and I, I never yeah. used to be like that. Honestly, when, before we had the sonar, I'd be like, yeah, come up, let's shoot the shit, you know, I think, but also I, I'd go fishing with a different mentality in general now. Anyways, like I'm very, yeah. very much more focused than I used to be. Gotcha. Well, I'm, I'm finding that, uh, and especially we, you know, we, we carry some charters. And so I, it's not like we're tournament fishing every day or, um, it, it's going to, it's going to take some getting used to, to be able to keep an eye on that and, and do everything I'm used to doing as well. But, uh, that I certainly want to be able to, you know, I don't want to have to hire an extra mate just to go and do that every day and to utilize it. You won't have to, it's a pretty, once you yeah. understand yeah, once what you, you look at, things. Yeah. The settings, yeah. And once you understand what is what, then you're not chasing around whales all day. Like I used to. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, it, it, it can be, it's just another tool. You know, I just throw it in my rotation of things that I look at over the course of, you know, a minute or two every day, you know, I look at all my electronics and the spread and what's around me. And I do that about, I mean, I don't know what you guys do, but I do that about a thousand times or sure. 10, thousand <laughs> times a day, you know, same yeah. stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see how you get dialed in with it because it's definitely, uh, it's definitely trickier in the shallow water, but there's gotta be a way to fine tune it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, um, we had a, we had a good day yesterday. Um, I mean, fishing's been okay here. We you know, catching a few dolphins, catching a sail once in a while, catching a stopping and catching some snappers or something. But yesterday we finally trolling around and kind of pulling a half of a spread, pulling a dredge on one side and a, I think a planer on the other, hoping to get a Wahoo bite. Uh -huh. And we raised a, uh, raised a quad of sails and, and caught a couple of them. And then, you know, throughout the day caught two or three more singles. And, uh, that's my mate was like, ah, oh, did you mark them on the, on the sonar? I was, oh yeah, sure. I saw yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, no, unfortunately I can't, can't attribute, uh, that was, uh, a blind luck just fishing on an edge like you would, uh, every day. But yeah. anyhow, it's, uh, I know, you know, some guys, uh, Glenn Cameron has, uh, has had one in his boat for a few months now. And, and I know he's, he's finding that he's been able to utilize it some here, um, especially this summer in the, you know, in the calmer water when he was live baiting, he was, he was marking some sales. And, uh, so I've gotten some settings from him and, and from Stetson Turney and some, you know, some other guys that uh, have been using the thing for a little while and I think we'll get there. Yeah. I think it, it's just like any, anything else. I think once you get used to it and, and start marking some fish on it and then getting a reaction out of this fish, it, uh, it'll, it'll just be like another thing, you know? Sure. I'm sure when people got just the regular bottom machine, they're like, I mean, this thing's amazing. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, like, so yeah. Just, just another progression. When I, uh, when I started mating, uh, in Wachaprig, the guy had one of the old paper machines, mm -hmm. you know, and wow. it's uh, just incredible to, to see how far they've come in 40 years now. But, uh, anyway, yeah, it's, uh, use what you got. It all seems new at the time, I guess, but you figure it out. Yeah. Just thinking 10 more years, what they're going to come out with. Oh I man. Imagine dude. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I don't, I don't even want them to come out with anything else. I think this yeah. is awesome right here. <laughs> yeah. Quick break, everyone. We usually don't run ads, but considering it is holiday season, we'll be running sales up to 50% off. So please check out our website at billfishgear.com and also check out our co-host website, hookedoptics.com. Thanks for listening. I'll tell you, I was thinking uh, in the Dominican, we were there. Oh, shoot. We, we, from April through like mid August this year. And the grass was so bad. Some days I was thinking, man, a, uh, a drone with like a 15 mile range that you could just send out and find out, you know, how the grass was over in, yeah, yeah. over in another section, you know, somewhere else where <laughs> should I pick up and move? Or is it going to be as bad as it, as it is here? Yeah. That's, uh, that, that would be something I could have used this summer, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait till you have the sonar down there. That's going to be, you'll be marking quads and the crazy that's things. The, yeah, I know that. I, I think that's, that's, uh, that's the training ground for the thing down there. They tell me I, I fished with, um, uh, James Turner and, and, uh, Watson and those guys on the salty fair a day or two and, uh, and got kind of got to sit up there and watch the, the sonar in action. And that was, you know, back in June or July, the fishing was kind of mediocre at the time. It's nothing like, uh, nothing like they're catching there now, but it was, uh, it was pretty cool. And they've, you know, through being down there for about a year with the thing now, they've, they've really got it dialed in. They've had a heck of a year. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. incredible what they've been yeah, doing. Yeah. Salty fair. Yeah. They've been on, they've been on a tear. Absolutely. That's sick. So now that your ocean city season has ended, are you, 
Where do you right, get it from? Right now, just going to Wrightsville. And then I, I got some work I need to do. Need a thousand hour service, little new carpet, stuff like that. And then maybe, maybe if I'm lucky, we, they might want to pull the trigger on going to Mexico. I've, I'd, I'd like to go back there. I'd, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I feel like it's it's been so... I mean, when you were there on the sea check, man, that was something. I remember that. I was there with Johnny, and you would you would put on some fucking clinics there, man. That was... <laughs> It's uh yeah it 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 was good sure good at times I, I uh yeah I miss that place I'd I'd love to go back as well I don't I don't know yeah you know, my boss really seems to enjoy the Dominicans so we'll see but yeah that's yeah. that's uh, that's a good time I hope you get to go back yeah me too it's just a a nice cool relaxing place to fish you know other than the roughness but you know you got to earn something and the Benitas so ooh man <laughs> no doubt don't miss those <laughs> yeah that's for sure. So. What's your guys' plan for next year? I think um, I think Nick that we're we're probably here in Stewart um, through February, and maybe the first of March go to Casa de Campo and and uh, spend a couple months there, and then a couple months in Capcana. And you know, I, I don't know. That's that's the tentative plan right now. We, uh, you know, if you were just to base it on the fishing, you would certainly you'd be in Capcana right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the for the marlin fishing, but you know my my boss has he has a lot of clients and friends that come down and stuff, and and they love Casa de Campo. And we've had some we've had some great fishing there as well. Now we didn't make it there this spring. We were we were on hold, kind of letting some of the COVID stuff clear up, and um, I, it didn't sound like the fishing was great there this year. But I'm you know I'm thinking it could be again this this coming spring. So so far as I know, that's that's what's on the uh, agenda for now. Is a, is a few months down there and then back here. And we, uh, you know, the last, if, if we're back here for July and August, um, the last several summers, we've, we've had a, a really good bite here in the summertime, mostly with live bait for the sailfish, just, you know, out around all of our wrecks and, and a lot of the bottom structure out front here. So got it. One of my friends caught 16 or 18 one day this summer. We've had certainly had plenty of days up in the double digits doing it. And that's, uh, Anyway, so and we've got a pretty good summertime clientele here now too. You know, that's that's one thing that changed is um, God years ago here the summer was always seemed like it was always kind of slow. Yeah, yeah. For the business here, you know, you, you really look forward to the winter, but you can you can stay busy here year round nowadays for sure, yeah. with the exception of maybe September and and seems like September and October are kind of back to school times and and uh, and a little slower. But the rest of the year, you could fish almost as much as you want. I think. Well, this summer was impressive. I mean, it's like those sales, they never, they never left, especially, I mean, like you said, in Stewart, man, those guys are putting up some crazy numbers. Yeah. Yeah. We missed it. We missed it this year. Last year we were, uh, and, and the, the, the years prior, we were back by, back with the boat and, you know, fishing in mid, by mid June and, and July and August. And, uh, really impressive. Um, last year, we caught, I think we counted it up and we caught more sales in July and August than we had in, you know, in, in December and January here wow. it was, was crazy to me. I, I would never have dreamed that uh, could happen, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been a good bite. Yeah, it's good. I mean, for us, we, we love fishing up there. It just gets weird for us live baiters because, you know, the further north we go up towards you and Stewart, you know, the, the depth is so much more gradual, you know, we're, we're used to fishing <laughs> a sharper edge, but you got a lot more ground to cover. A lot more ground to cover, but yeah, no doubt. How about you know you get some, you guys get some some good uh, sail fishing down there in October a lot of times out in the deeper water. And yeah, stuff. Well, right now actually, I mean I, I haven't been out yet, but I mean we went out the other day, caught a few right out front just with the kites. But right now actually, uh, like Ocean Reef Key Largo, they're catching. My buddy caught like eleven for fifteen in the sand, you know, oh, wow. like in the like twenty feet of water in the showers which is, that's pretty, that's pretty fun fishing, the sight casts yeah. and everything. Is that normal this time of year, Nick, or is that? Yeah, that's that normal, like thing. October, yeah. November, and then December, it'll still kind of be good. And then they'll kind of move down to Island Marauda. And, uh, but yeah, it's fun, man. Just fall, kind of watch the frigate birds and see a big shower and you know, see like three boats punch it over there and they'll see like, you know, four, you know, for sales is balling up the, the ballyhoos and stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. Nice. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. I've never, never, uh, I haven't done much fishing in the keys. We've years ago fished that, uh, was it tournament? They had the world sailfish championship or something. You guys yeah, remember Key that? West. Oh yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. 15, 20 years ago. And did a little bit of, 
you know, a little bit of kite fishing there on the edge, but we weren't very competitive and, and, uh, and there was none of that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't up in the shallows, up on the flats, like you're talking about that, that would be something. Yeah, that tournament, man, that, that used to be a big turnout for that tournament, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a show. 90 boats a couple of times, man. That was, that was impressive. Absolutely. And so BJ, uh, where did we leave off? And you were a young guy running the, uh, the bone shaker okay. there. And now you, then what was it, what was your progression after that? Well, I was, uh, I was, um, so I ran the bone shaker from, 2000 i'm sorry from 1994 uh until up into 2006 wow and, uh, holy crap yeah good run it was yeah i had a, had a really good run and uh i wound up getting myself in some trouble at a dui and had a hard time renewing my license at that point i was kind of forced into a career change and and forced into a lifestyle change i i uh actually quit drinking that year. But anyway, uh, Scott Fawcett came on to, to run the bone shaker and had a lot of success as well. I went to work for a, uh, a guy that had been probably my best charter client back on the bone shaker, uh, named Mike Fogel that had a, uh, a 51 bought it, wind up buying a 51 Bertram called the challenge. And we, uh, and we ran that out of the Hutchinson Island Marriott for a couple of years. Um, and, uh, I went to, had an opportunity, went to work for uh, a guy that was building a, a Spencer with um, pods in it, one of the first uh, pod boats, and uh, kind of went through the, the building process with him. Things didn't go quite as well as, as we'd hoped, and um, we kind of decided to go in different directions. And at that point, I started running the Sea Check, which was a, a great boat and, a, and a, you know, great group of guys to work for worked for them for five or six years that was a 59 spencer and we went to uh went to east Lima harris we wound up taking that to um did a lot of stuff in the bahamas the southern bahamas and uh, and they let me carry charters on it while we were here in stewart and we wound up taking that to uh capcana in the dominican republic in uh i guess 2013 and 2014 so it was great uh great experience. I, um, at that point, that was a boat that had a couple of partners. One of the partners had gotten older and just wasn't using the boat much. And, uh, so sounded like that they were going to sell that boat. I, uh, had an opportunity to, to work for a fellow that was, uh, had a, had just bought a Viking. Uh, he was based in Wrightsville beach, but we kept, he kept it in Palm beach in the winter time. And, uh, that was fun. Enjoyed my, and spent a couple of months there in Wrightsville, did some, some Wahoo fishing, got to take that boat to to uh, Casa de Campo one spring and enjoyed that. And um, there again, that gentleman, I, I got along with great with those folks and, and would probably still be working for him today, but they wanted to get a yacht and tow a, you know, a center console around. And I just wasn't ready to, uh, to make that transition. I just, just didn't want to fish. <laughs> I didn't think I was ready to, to fish that way, let alone, you know, try and, uh, and, and run a, a big crew, 90 or hundred foot yacht or something. Exactly. So at that point I started working for the, for the, uh, the folks that I'm with now that was in, uh, in 2015, the fall of 2015. And, and, uh, that worked out really well. They had a, uh, at the time it was a couple of partners and, and they weren't sure if they were going to like it, how much they were going to like it. They had bought a, uh, 60 foot Jim Smith which was a, uh, which was a great boat, but it had the old man engines in it. And, uh, it, as good as that thing ran, it just, it smoked terribly. You know, you'd, you'd get in at the end of the day and feel like you'd smoke a couple packs of Marlboros or something. It was, it was harsh. So we, uh, started, started looking at other boats and, and this boat that they bought now, um, had a sea keeper, which was, was something they were hoping to, to get in their next boat. And, uh, and we, we're familiar with the boat as well. I mean, when, uh, when Richie Howe first built it, he had called me because the boat was going to be spending the winters here in Stewart. And, um, so when the folks brought it down, I met them and, and, um, kind of got them set up with somebody to go fish with them a few times and, you know, just show them how we, how we, uh, rigged up for sail fish and all that. And it had stayed in touch with those folks a lot. So when they were, when they were looking to, to get rid of that boat at the timing was, was perfect where we were, were able to sell the Jim Smith and, and, kind of move right into to that boat so it's yes. uh yeah it's been a it's been a good one it's been uh done a lot too we just put a new uh put a new deck in it this year and uh, like i say the sonar and as you know you know if you look every year you can uh, you can certainly find several projects that you'd yeah. like to do to, to keep the boat like you want to keep it or you know 
to improve it. Yeah. So you and this guy, this guy's great. Now? Yeah, yeah. This boat, it was built with one. It's got one of the old uh, M8000s in it. And um, we did have to replace the uh, the sphere one time, but otherwise, it's we've had really good had really good luck with it. Yeah. You know, and once you're used to it, like uh, like Anthony was saying about fishing with the sonar, once you're used to the Sea Keeper, it would be tough to yeah, yeah. leave the thing off every day or you know ride around with it broken. It's uh, when that if it, when there's an issue, we we fix it. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's a you know it's a comfortable it's a comfortable fishing platform for sure what uh you mentioned southern bahamas what was one of your favorite islands down there well we uh we spent some time at uh spent some time at flying fish marina there on long island and uh you know really really liked it there i liked running over and fishing uh bird point off of uh crooked island oh yeah um we anchored up there a few times and and uh and and had some good days you know, some good days, several blue marlin bites a day there and some tunas and stuff like that. And uh, and then again, Rum Key, spent some time at Rum back when that was when that was open and, and uh, you know, had some some good times there and, and some really good fishing. And uh, Cat Island as well certainly had some, you know, some of my better days of uh, of marlin fishing before I went to the Dominican or would have been right there at Cat Island. And uh, other than the uh, mosquitoes at at dusk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is a great spot great spot but speaking about uh the fishing around bird point there on, on the way home from the dominican this year we had occasion to stop at uh and spend a night on crooked that new marina there yeah yeah. and that uh, that was really cool and i've you know talked to of course saw a lot of the reports and talked to a lot of guys that went there and spent several weeks or you know or months there and man they had some they had some fantastic fishing there this summer yeah, yeah, fishing was the guy. It was really hot there. We were we were yeah. in Long Island there for a while, but we would just run across for the day. Uh huh. Yeah, tough to beat flying fish, and I, I love the guys there. And and uh, you know, good Jason restaurants. was there, right? When yeah. yeah, yeah, but certainly a nice nice facility they've built there at uh, at Crooked now. And I I know uh, a lot of folks that are are planning on uh, spending some time there the spring and summer. So. I'm sure there'd be a lot more good reports to come. I never spent much time at San Sal. I know a lot of guys that, you know, spent the summers there and had a blast or, you know, spent a couple months yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Had some good fishing around the moon there. But I, uh, seems like I got to pop in there for a day or two or three at a time, but never, never spent a lot of time there. Like a lot of you guys. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you something, BJ. Like I'm noticing, like obviously on the moon and the St. Thomas and the Dominican, can you, when it comes, at least for the blue Marlin, do you, do you tend to, can you fish around it in, in other places like the Bahamas and stuff like that? Like, do you, can you, you know, do you feel like with your experiences in, in those areas or the Dominican and those other areas, could you, can you like kind of base your bosses if, schedule trips and stuff based on the moon in the Bahamas as well? I would, um, i tell you, man, it's, it's, it's been so long since I've fished a lot in the Bahamas, but I would say yes. I mean, if he were to, to ask me to, you know, to schedule him on the five best days in the month or something. I think I would, I think I would probably do it leading up to the moon. And uh, we've certainly seen that the last few years in the, the Dominican that, that, um, you know, ideally you would do that. And we've had some great fishing on the new moon as well. And as a guy that's trying to call people and, and get charter clients to come down and fish, you know, you, you like to think, and you want to be able to tell people, look, or, you know, we, we have good fishing all, all month, but it's, uh, it certainly seems to uh, certainly seem to peak around the moon and and uh, in the Dominican the last few years very very noticeable. I um I can't always do that. Uh, you know our our boss has a kind of a schedule and and to be honest I don't I can't remember the last time he was there around the full moon which yeah. is kind of a shame. But uh, there again you know for him it's it's not it's not all about the fishing and uh, so we always seem to we always seem to to uh, make the best of it and, and, and catch some when he's there. But uh, I'd like to get him out there for a double digit day or one of these days. Yeah. But still, what did okay. Bubba Carter say last, a couple of weeks ago when he was in Venezuela, there was, there had been more people that walked on the moon than caught 10 blue Marlins. And, you know, <laughs> and when he was in Venezuela, now it's just normal. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. No doubt about it, man. It's uh yeah, it's certainly gotten uh, a lot more exposed. Everybody's a lot more effective, I suppose, and and uh, you know, fishing in all the all the right places nowadays. That seen out fishing do, uh, is kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a cool story with Bubba last week. You guys, did you ever do any of that deep dropping over there in uh, DR? You know, I've had uh, not had much success with it there in the DR. Um, 
we certainly did a lot in the uh, did a lot in the Bahamas. I just uh, and I know a few guys. You know, Eddie Wheeler would come over there and spend a day at it, and they'd they'd scratch out a catch. And there's uh, one of the local boats that I see uh, over there that's that does it and pretty good at it. Um, I've done a lot of the daytime sword fishing there, um, down in Casa de Campo and, and had, you know, had good success and, yeah. you know, several days where we'd go and do it for just a few hours and catch a couple. Um, but, uh, as far as the, uh, the snapper and grouper and stuff like that, man, I, I just, I probably haven't put enough effort into it to, uh, to get really good at it, which for me, if, you know, we prefer to go marlin fishing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to snapper fishing, for but, sure. uh, but we, uh, and, and thankfully, you know, like when the boss is there, or we have folks there, we seems like we're always able to catch enough dolphin or a tuna or a wahoo or something where, where everybody, body's got something uh, fresh to eat for dinner anyway. So, yeah, that's yeah, the yard's a special place, man. No doubt. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, we're lucky to have such, uh, such nice facilities there too, you know, that, uh, God, God, Capcana and Casa de Campo are just, it's just, uh, there's a lot to do there besides fish. You know, you can play golf and you got the nice restaurants and everybody always feels safe and the beaches. And so it's, uh, it's a nice venue. It certainly is. Yeah. Nice. Is that one of your favorite places to fish right now? Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, I, unlike, uh, unlike most everybody else I know, I, I have not fished in Costa Rica. I've, I fished in Guatemala with some guys I worked with on the, uh, the guys I worked with on the sea check took me down there for a few days. And, uh, and enjoyed that we had the fishing wasn't great when we were there but but you know we caught some fish and uh uh so i, I haven't fished costa rica and i i, I haven't fished the sea mounts there I, I don't have that to to compare it to so for me yes that you know that i spent one summer in saint thomas and that was good we had had good fishing there but uh you know overall the most consistent and the, and the best fishing i've seen would have been in in the dominican yeah did you fish with uh salazar in guatemala no we fished on uh it was davis claps boat at the time called the affinity and uh Wong, wongo was running it um he had davis had a uh he had his own i want to say it was camp affinity or casa affinity that he had set up and he had a driver you know had a, had a few rooms there so um it was kind of the he come in and, and use his place in the evening and then, you know, go and fish on his boat for the day. And they, they'd uh, make you lunch to take with you and get back there and they'd feed you. And it was a, it was a really nice setup. I know he, I don't think he's, he's in that business anymore. I think he's gotten rid of the place and the boat, but uh, yeah. that was, was a lot of fun. I was glad I, glad I got to go and see it. And when I was there, the old uh, the Whitaker that I had run that was the bone shaker is down there. Of course, now I think it's, I think they call it finest kind. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, so they, David owns that boat and the uh, affinity now too. And, and he just purchased the hooker. Right. Yeah. yeah that was, uh, that was cool getting to see that and, you know, and what they had done <laughs> to it and, and, uh, and uh, the old girl still going strong. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I was there last week for a wedding. I got to fish with uh, David on the hooker and uh it's was, it was pretty cool yeah oh, it's a great you had a great day didn't you like yeah it was 14, a fun day 10 for 14 sales and blue marlin something like that 10 two? for 14 and two blues oh wow yeah that's uh that's and then very good can't be not a dredge just just two teasers three teasers yeah. you do the three down the middle no they do uh so, yeah two squid chains and then just two cockpit teasers i got you simple yeah you don't you don't dare pull a dredge there do you i know they they didn't know yeah. <laughs> they didn't want to start that stuff down there. No, uh, no. you can't play it. So you don't need it. Doesn't sound like they're having incredible fishing there now. Yeah, I know that. I left now, and I see. I think the top boat this week had like 47, 47 for fifty nine. <laughs> and is is this their normal season? This isn't their high season. I would there, I would say that this is as far as I know the the October, November into December is a is okay. a really good time to be there. Gotcha. So I mean, I don't really think there's a bad time to be there but yeah. this is definitely uh it's definitely good right now i mean mm. it was like it was like slick calm it was like it was like this is this is easy fishing man yeah. man hard to beat the, no, wow. there's the critter just the lack of critters there is just so great like the critters there is like a 30 pound dolphin yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> my dog, like it's just the uh, lack lack of just getting eaten up by bonitas and stuff is is kind of awesome as well as the typically calm weather sure Sure. What would you say, VJ? I mean, you've had a, a great long career and, you know, worked for some guys for like, for some, for, for some boat owners for quite a, quite a long time. Like what, what advice would you give young guys? I mean, I've been in my job for nine years, but I only think it's because my people put up with me, not because they actually like me. They're just, they're just like, he's still <laughs> do, you know? 
Uh, I doubt that, but um, yeah, but give us some, give us some good, good old words of wisdom, man. Man, I, uh, I don't know. I, I just, um, just try and remember that, uh, you know, especially if we're, we're out of town or whatever, it's, uh, you know, it's their vacation. It's not my vacation. And, and I've gotten certainly better about that now that, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, I don't, don't party. I probably used to party too much, um, as I'm sure anyone could realize that that could, could get in the way. Um, but just, uh, you know, it, it's just, just getting along, knowing what's knowing what's important to to the people you're working for. There again, my you know my boss likes to fish and he likes to catch fish, but it's not the most important thing in the world to him. Um, you know, when he comes to the DR. We may leave it. We may leave at eight o'clock in the morning. We might leave at ten or eleven o'clock in the morning. You know, it's not going out there and being top boat is is just not uh, it's not necessarily his his uh mo not not what drives him he's you know i was telling him when when i was fishing on the salty fair we left it whatever five thirty or six o'clock in the morning and he was he was like man that's a lot like work there he said i've already got a job we won't be doing that when i get there so it's uh you know it's um it's doing doing whatever it takes for the particular program i back when i was on the the bone shaker and in some of these boats I, I never would have dreamt that i you know i'd be cooking dinner for the for the boss on the boat once in a while and, and stuff like that but that's you know that's the kind of stuff we uh we do now it's just, it just depends on the it depends on the folks and and uh, and the program how they like to use the boat. You know, back then we I've had jobs where we you know you fish from sun up to sundown and clean the boat and just go to a restaurant or somebody brings a pizza down and that's it. But uh, with with a, a lot of other folks, it's fish for a while and and uh, and uh, you know where they're having dinners is important to them as as what they caught that day. So I just say uh, just try and be flexible and and uh, even keeled. You know, I've always tried to. Uh, Try not to uh, try and let some stuff roll off your back. <laughs> I think yep. you got to do a lot of that yeah, uh, to make things work. Well, you, that. sir, have an even keel. as about as even keel as anybody I've ever met. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I try. I uh, yeah, try not to try not to get too too excited or or too down. You know, just kind of middle of the road, not upset anybody. And and uh, I think that's gone a long way. And 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 uh, you know, work hard. And, Try and uh, do your job. Keep the boat looking right. And uh, usually things go well. It's all about personalities, too. You know that. It's, uh, you know, some some people were. Yeah. Some people are like oil and, and water. It just, yeah. just not work. Just find the right fit and, and uh, work hard at it. Absolutely. Have you ever had any of those jobs where you're like, just, man, this is just not going to work out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have. There were, uh, you know, I've had people that... Uh, that you, you'd fish with and, and on a daily basis and think, man, you know, that's a great guy. But then you, um, when you would try and do something a little more long-term, it, it, uh, it wasn't as, as easy as, you know, just kind of changed the whole dynamic. So yeah, yeah, I've, I've had, uh, you know, one in particular that, that just didn't work out, you know, that I kind of, kind of regret it, but looking back, I don't think there was anything I could have done any differently. It's just, uh, just the way it was. Um, overall been pretty lucky, you know, so everybody's different too. You know, I've, I've worked for guys that, uh, I've worked for guys where, you know, every hundred bucks you spent, you kind of had to, you had to watch it. You had to, you, had, you really had to, had to be careful about that. And, and, uh, and other guys, it's just, why are you bothering me with this stuff? Nah, yeah. Get yeah. You don't ask me this, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, it, it, see a little bit of everything and uh it's uh just gotta gotta know know who you're dealing with and and working with and and uh do things the way the way you can both make it work out yeah i got you uh, definitely can run the gamut i've been fortunate to just be on the blood money most most of my captain or all my captain career and you know i've been lucky in that aspect but i, I in ocean city you can see the the definite personalities and why why it worked for some people, you know, on some of Sure. So, sure. So. Well, there again, you had, you know, working with, working with John was, was great experience and, and, uh, was good on a resume. Like I yeah. was like, was telling Nick, you know, having, having worked, uh, having worked, uh, Miss Britt or, or with Ray and those guys, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, who you work with and, and, uh, what you saw there, I'm sure has, has helped you moving forward and, uh, with your, with your captain's career. And like you say, nine years, man, that's, that's a good stint. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hope you yeah. get, I hope you get 19 more. Yeah. God, yeah. I, I, they're like family. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, 
it, was there a job that you would you would attribute like you said me with Johnny and Nick with a uh, Ray for you would would like what maybe the one that a real stepping st- a real step for you that you can remember? Well, as a mate, um, I really only I really only had maybe well I shouldn't say that there was a summer here and a summer there, but um, you know from the time I was thirteen, I worked on a boat up there in Watcher Prig until I was I don't know. I, I would still work for him in the summers. In fact, when I came back, a guy named Earl Parker, Ray Parker's brother. And um, that really, you know, I mean, showed up. You had to be there every day. And God, sometimes we fished 30 days straight, you know, and I was 15, 16 years old there in the summertime. So that really, uh, that really helped me with, with work ethic and, and reliability. Um, I think I, uh, I worked with a guy named, named George McCullough on a 41 Scarborough that ran out of Watcher Prig in there and, and then in Oregon Inlet for a month or two in the fall. That was, uh, you know, it was the first probably fancier boat that I had worked on. He was a hard charger. So he was a, uh, a really good fisherman. And, uh, you know, and there was, that was the first boat I ever had to clean teak on, I think, as I recall, you know, I was probably 18 or well, 20 or 21 years old at the time. And then with, uh, on the uh, hobo, my friend Bougie Warren ran that and I I fished with him for a few years down here. And, uh, he was, he was a really good, he was the consummate diplomat, you know, very even keel, never just always friendly to folks. And, and, uh, and I I really felt like that helped me uh, a lot and, you know, kind of, kind of watching him and how he dealt with with clients and with our boss and, and stuff like that. So, picked up a little bit, you know, you pick up a little bit of a little bit of stuff as you, as you go along and try and apply it to what you're doing now. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. I like it. I like getting some wisdom, DJ. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I've, uh, yeah, I've had, had some good breaks and, and made some good choices and, uh, by the same token that, you know, uh, certainly stumbled some along the way, but anyhow, 55 now and still, you know, still able to do this and, and make a reasonably good living. And, you know, I love my job because I think if you can say that you're, yeah, yeah. you're a pretty happy fellow. What, what keeps pretty you going fellow. after all these years, VJ? Man, I just, uh, and I've had mates tell me that too, you know, man, you still love fishing, don't you? And I really do. I, I love, mm-hmm. you know, I, I love watching people catch fish. I like the, the hunt, the art of the hunt or whatever, when you're, uh, when you, you know, looking to put together a day, I don't know. And I've always said fear of starvation too. <laughs> <laughs> you know? fear, is a, fear is a motivator. Wonderful fear, motivator. That's right. Fear of starvation. Baby would, you say you're, uh, would you say you're still as mad at them now as when you were, when you're in your thirties? You know, I, I, I think I am, but there again, I'm not a, it's not really a, a program where we're, where we're pushing so hard, but so yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, if I, I'm going to get to fish a few tournaments this winter, I think a couple on a, on another boat, um, with a fellow that's, that just bought a boat that uh, was in it years ago. And, and, uh, my boss will be here. So I think I'll get to fish a couple tournaments there. And I think my boss will fish one tournament. Um, you know, that man, the tournament thing, it's, uh, it's a lot like football. It's definitely a team deal. Oh, yeah. You know, you gotta, yeah. everybody's gotta be, be committed and, serious and and uh so sometimes sometimes when i go and, and fish a tournament now and we're i feel like we're, we're putting in about 50 percent effort it makes it hard <laughs> it makes it hard to, to to get into it you know if you got you got anglers that just haven't you bring anglers along that have never hooked a fish and, and put them in a you know a tournament environment um stuff like that just i think i'm i think i'm as mad at them but mm-hmm. i, I it just I don't know. It's uh, uh, yeah. certainly haven't uh, certainly haven't been uh, kicking butt and taking names here lately. So it's hard to say. <laughs> but like you yeah. said, that has a lot to do with the, the program and the the level of commitment, you know, from the from from the owners and the and and the guests or the anglers that are going to be with you. You know, it's not not always up to up to you. That's that's yeah. a uh, I think that's a hard lesson I learned. You know, I I uh, back on the on the bone shaker. I think I took a lot of that for granted. Um, and I, I think a lot of that, you know, probably I, I think I, it might have boosted my ego uh, a little more than it needed because, you know, it's it really is. It was having everybody on the same page and, and putting forth the effort to, you know, to maintain a level of success like that. For sure. It's it's, it's not just one guy. It definitely uh, is a time that like you, you can't take that for granted because once it's over, it's it's hard to get back. You know, like you got to really, really enjoy it when you're on a boat with people that really are are all all driving in the same direction. Yeah, you know? for sure, for sure. Enjoy it while it lasts because it's you know you never know. It's yeah. 
it's fun. And, but the next gig may be a little different. Nikki, what are you, what's, what's fishing on the show time? Like, man, like, uh-huh. this is a, you got, it's mostly younger guys, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, all I'd say early thirties kind of range, uh, maybe a couple over 40, but I'd say that is definitely, uh, you know, a key to success is, you know, it's a group of guys that are, you know, just about as angry at them as I am because I'm furious at them. And <laughs> I mean, if, I mean, if we miss one on a, a pre-fishing day before a tournament, I, I mean, I, I let them have it. I was like, <laughs> just like, you know, Bill Belichick lays it on somebody, you know, it's like, yeah. I mean, I just, but you gotta, you got a group that can, you know, some people you can't just lose your shit. Like I learned when I was younger running this boat, I would, I would, I would have my fucking prima donna meltdowns and it, I had, they had to talk to me a couple of times. And thankfully my bosses were patient enough on me when I was young, you know, 20, 25, 26. And they were patient enough with me to, to let me learn. And they guided me a little bit. And I mean, but some great, like on the bill Fisher, it wasn't, it was very normal to just, just get screamed at, you know, <laughs> so, but like, that's where, and I came from that boat to this. So that's the only thing I really knew, uh, yeah. you know, and then I, over the years, I learned that, you know, that ain't going to work for our group. You know, like yeah. you said, BJ, just, just understanding who you're, who you're working with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Then, exactly. I mean, that's all so, I but, knew at the time too, being like I said, I, you know, I work, I grew up fishing for Ray Rocher and yeah, you know, yeah. he, he might seem like the nicest guy in the world to everybody on the dock, but working for him, I could tell, I could promise you that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear you. He'd let you have it. Huh? Uh, but your, yeah. your, your guys are, con- I don't know if they're conditioned or they're just, you know, young guys are, can deal with that a little bit better than maybe having like a 25 year old kid yelling at some dude that could be his dad. You know? yeah. Right. So, they, well, well, Nick, I'm, I'm sure that, um, yeah, the, I mean, the God, the kite fishing you guys are doing, that's, I know it's a ton of work. I, you know, I made light of it earlier about, uh, you know, us not having to cut mullets and all that, but I know there's a ton of effort and, you know, it's like you say, what, six or seven guys that are all dead serious all day long and busting their asses. I, I you know, I know it's, uh, it's a lot of work to do it the way you do it and, and be successful at it. Yeah. It's, I mean, just, just like dead bitty, man, you just, you gotta be focused, you know, you can't really, you gotta have guys working the rods. You can't have guys, you know, just drinking, getting drunk, you know, not paying attention because it's a matter of seconds. You, you know, that fish beats you to the bait. It's over. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And as competitive exactly. as it is there. I feel like you guys are super competitive. Like one fish is just, you know, could be the difference between a lot of money and not so much money. (laughs) I mean, it's literally what it comes down to. I mean, that's like the same guys are all going to get roughly, you know, the same amount of shots, but it's going to be who missed the least amount of those shots, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's right. It's, uh, it's, it's competitive. We love it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I said, you gotta, you gotta enjoy that environment when you can, because, you know, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I hope to have one day where I'm like, you know what? I just want to go back to just going fishing. You know, I'm not there yet. I don't, don't know. I hope <laughs> it's not anytime soon, but I just, I just want to compete now. Like, yeah, like sure. you, Nikki. yeah. So. I, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention I've, I've been lucky. I've had, uh, the same mate with me, a guy named John Stuckel for about five years now. Oh, since wow. he was, since he was 20 there you and go. Uh, you know, he's, I mean, he'll be, a, he'll be a good captain, be a great captain here. One of these days, I hope it's not anytime soon. Yeah. I hate to see him go, but uh, you know, it's, it's there again. It's nice to, to know that you got a guy that's going to be there every day. Um, and he is a lot of those things, a lot of those qualities I was describing, you know, as far as even keeled and, and, you know, he's good. I've, I've had mates that, you know, you miss a fish and slam a rod down and, you know, F this yeah, yeah, and F yeah. that. And, and that's, you know, it, you just can't, you can't do that. And what we're doing with, uh, you know, that wouldn't work with my boss and it, it doesn't work with our clients. So, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to, uh, to mention him and, and to how important that is to, 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 to having and maintaining a, a good, uh, a good program. Yeah. Yeah. I, that partnership. I mean, I, that, that's a very, for the, like to have the partnership between the captain and the, the full-time mate, the guy who's with you all the time. That's a, a special thing too. You know, it, Absolutely. it doesn't, you know, you got to go through, everybody's got to go through sometimes, sometimes where you got to run through a couple guys, not, not cause they were bad, just cause maybe the personality for the owner, for the captain wasn't, you know, ideal to find, to finally settle on exactly the guy. So if we had, oh. we had a guy, guy this year, it was, we loved him. So 
that. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm probably easier to work with now than I, I might have been 20 years ago too. You know, I mean, I had some I had some great mates back then, but I, I suspect I was you know was not as <laughs> I don't know. I was, uh, and maybe it was maybe it was because I was mad at him. I was put uh, in hard charging uh, all the time. But anyway, it's uh, you know it's definitely man, it's definitely nice not to have to have to worry about getting to the boat and the the lights aren't on yet and go oh boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is he going to show up today? It's, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you 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 probably don't even have to say anything to him over the course of the day. No, at, no. After it's five it. years, yeah, we've got a got a, a really good uh, working relationship, good rapport. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. That's awesome. That's that's for sure. That's awesome. This is awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you, VJ. Absolutely. It's good. Good catching up with you, man. Always. I, I don't think I know of somebody that's ever like, like said anything even remotely negative about you. I feel like you, like you said, you try to keep an even keel and I think you do a great job of that, man. Dude. Wow. Well, that's De- definitely a, definitely cool. a cool inspiration. Thanks, man. Good to see you again. And, and Nick, nice to meet you. And um, yeah, you too. Maybe I'll run into you along, along the line somewhere. Thanks for having me on and, and continued success to both of you. You're killing yeah. it. Keep it up. Thank you, man. Good luck with the sonar. All right. Thanks. All righty. If you have one any questions, uh, send them over to the podcast at billfish.site. Thanks for listening. Captain BJ.